How's it going, everybody? This is your astrology horoscope for Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. I'm astrologer Alex Skiles, and welcome to the Moon Base. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. Today's a special day. The moon's in Cancer, so I kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday um, with Pluto and Aquarius and the polarity point of being Leo, and when the moon comes into Leo, it's like, you know, that polarity point is going to be activated every time we have planets coming into Leo now. So today, with the moon in Cancer, this is a very exciting moment, especially if you are somebody that has uh, Cancer placements in their chart, which I actually do. So um, I, this is significant because, especially with the moon and its dignity, you know, the moon rules cancer. So this is very exciting for cancer energy because the past 15 years, Pluto's been in Capricorn. So every time we have planets with a moon coming to cancer, it's just like it's getting wrecked on the other end of Pluto, right? And it's it's been tough for cancer people. Let's just be real. So if you're a cancer person, good for you. <laughs> so yesterday the moon came into cancer now that venus is in capricorn with mars and mercury there's this conversation that we're having looking back at like wow like we've fucking been through a lot the past 15 years and it's almost like that point when you're going through something and you just break through in a very emotional way, in a very cancer kind of way, and the tears just come down and it's just like, yeah, finally, I fucking made it. Like, ah, that's kind of what today feels like. And with the moon um, making a trine to Saturn, you know, and Saturn being the ruler of um, where all these of the ruler of Capricorn, where all of these personal planets, Venus, Mars, and Mercury, are the most personal planets to us, right? So, it's this shit's today is very personal. Things can get very personal, very emotional. And I think the emotions that are coming up are about like how much we've gone through and that we're starting to see that we're on the other side of the freaking heaviness that we've been experiencing for so long now and there's so much we've learned and there's so many lessons that we've learned emotionally and definitely like you know with the cancer people what they've been experiencing uh for the past 15 years is not only how to deal with their emotions in a much more solid way and not let the emotions take over but when it comes to relationships it's like not letting relationships just dictate your emotions and that you know relationships take hard work as well and with venus and capricorn that's coming up it's like any kind of relationship it takes work it's everyday work it's not just like oh we're soulmates and we're twin flames and now we're together forever it's like come on like great like yeah i do believe that people divinely come together to serve a purpose on this earth but I also don't mean that's just the be all end all. I don't believe that that's just the be all end all of what being in a relationship is all about. It's like the emotional connection is made first in Cancer, but the work is done in Capricorn. Now that Venus is in Capricorn, the Moon's in Cancer today, and its dignity, Mars is in Capricorn, and its exaltation. Like there's a lot of, um, you know peak energy happening today with the sun in aquarius and its detriment it's with pluto it's like this is very um potent this is very potent and with the moon trining over to saturn also sextiling jupiter jupiter still i mean this is still active here jupiter's only at six degrees um so this is like there's a lot of feeling of like wow we're on the other side of things we're seeing the future we're seeing the vision of what we can really move into now and at the same time it's just like 
for cancer people and for the cancer energy, like it's a, this is the moment where you can finally come out of your shell, you know, and be born again. Like, you know, it's a rebirth. That's what Pluto transits are all about is, you know, dying and going through whatever you have to go through to come out on the other side, you know, and this is a whole new wave and a whole new frequency here um, with the cardinal signs. And then later throughout the day, um, the moon is going to make an opposition to Mercury and and Mars. So, I mean, when this kind of comes up, there's this reflection point. I mean, that's what the moon does. It reflects, and definitely with the moon in Cancer, it reflects even more from multiple angles, right? We're getting multiple angles of reflection. It's almost like we're in a hall of mirrors that are reflecting of the past and the future and the present all at once, especially with all these personal planets. It's like, you know, we're starting to see what we've gone through. Cause sometimes when you're in a moment of going through something very deep and intense, like you don't know what you're going through, right? Especially with Pluto transits, you don't really know like the, the intensity that's occurring or the trauma that's occurring that can come up with Pluto. I mean, Pluto rules trauma our generational trauma, you know, our soul trauma our genetic trauma, right? So there's this reflection point of, many different timelines, especially from the past 15 years and what we've gone through and how far we've come, the work that we've put in. And now, especially with Saturn and Jupiter and Venus here now, like getting ready to also activate all those trines and sextiles we've had from Jupiter to Saturn to Mercury and Mars, like and the sun that was there. I mean, over the past month, we've had so much of that buildup of these positive influences as we've been going through this big Pluto buildup transition. Um, this does come down to the work that we've put in in our relationships and realizing how important our relationships are. Um, but also at the same time, not getting lost in the negative side of relationships with the South Node and Libra. So it's like, you know, I think Libra and Cancer have a tendency to just give themselves to other people more than they put into themselves. You know, Cancer wants to nurture and just take care of everyone else. And Libra just wants to have many relationships with everybody else and they forget about themselves. So it's like this North Node Nares, it's like, this is where the healing is starting to begin. And today we're having a reflection point um, of how far we've come and where we can actually take that experience of 15 years of Pluto and Capricorn because it was an experience. Um, and know how to work with it and know which way to take because that's what cardinal signs are all about, right? So if you don't know what cardinal necessarily means... It's north, south, east, and west, right? It's the, the solstice and the equinox points. And that's where the sun, you know, travels along the ecliptic is, is those cardinal points. That's when the seasons change. So when the sun moves into a cardinal sign, that's when the seasons change. The equinoxes and the solstice. So cardinal signs, that's why we call, you know, um, the north, south, east, and west. That's We call them cardinal directions, Right. So that's why we call them cardinal signs. So it's like the path and the doorways of where we're headed, which way we're going, you know. Um, so now we're taking these experiences and these reflections um, to really know and have more confidence on which way to go. And that's what Mars and Capricorn is all about, is like really having this very um, powerful confidence of like, we're going this way, we're building this, you know, we're going to, Get rid of this because this is unnecessary to where we're headed. And it can be a little colder. So there, there is this like kind of opposition today of our emotions, especially that come up of like, man, like we have to 
not be afraid to express our emotions and want to take care of others and nurture people, but also like maintain a strong, steady, stoic Capricorn kind of uh, detachment from the emotions to really get to where we're headed. Like, you know, if you're climbing a mountain, it's like you can't really get lost in the emotions um, when things get tough, you know, but we need to express our emotions to really show um, within our relationships that we truly care and want to take care of and nurture and, you know, have a better healthy life. So every time the moon's in cancer now, it's like there's a little bit of release that we're not that we're not used to. Um, Pluto has just been so heavy every time the moon comes into cancer the past 15 years. And that's very exciting. So and we're going to have Jupiter coming to Gemini this year, but next year... We're going to have Jupiter come into Cancer, and Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. So we're going to have Jupiter in Cancer without Pluto and Capricorn. Thank God. That's when things are really going to start expanding in a massive way, which that is way beyond today's chart. But, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, today's like a massive reflection point. And Venus is in Capricorn. Uh, the sun's three degrees Mars is getting ready to make a square to Chiron. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. So, but yes, like today is a moment where a lot of very important reflections are coming up and we want to be aware of all of them, of, of what angles they're um, trying to show us. And I think it's really these angles that we're starting to see are different points of time that we've gone through. Um, to really help us get to where we're going now because uh, we're in a whole new wavelength. And we still do have one more dose of Pluto and Capricorn to deal with, but still, like, we're we're moving into a whole new direction. So I got the Princess of Cups today, and I think this was very um, Moon and Cancer, Trining Saturn and Pisces, you know, and just going with the flow and not getting lost and not drowning in emotions and still being able to express your emotions and not getting lost in um in the in the depths you know when it, when things get tough and when things get capricorn when things get a little hard you know sometimes you got to put those emotions aside so at the same time with pluto not being in capricorn it's like it's allowing us to be able to tap into those intuitive emotions um without the intensity of pluto being here in a much more um feminine way right and being able to flow and ride and surf the waves like you you know that's what i've been saying since saturn's been in pisces with neptune and pisces it's like this is what saturn is teaching us right now is how to surf you know like, I've never surfed in my life. Like, I love skateboarding and snowboarding and all that kind of shit, but I've never surfed. I can't go underwater, actually. I have an ear thing. That's another long story. But, like, this is where we have to learn how to surf the the waves, you know. And every wave is different. It could be a small wave, a big wave, and you don't know what the next wave is going to be. You don't know the size of the next wave. But we have to be ready for it and just trust that the wave that we're on is going to take us to the place that we're supposed to be. And it always does. And that's the thing about uh, the water signs and the water energy and Neptune and Saturn and Pisces. Like, that's the lesson. It's like we can't control every aspect of everything. Like, we thought we could with Pluto and Capricorn. And it turns out that's not the best way to approach things. And with Pluto and Aquarius, the sun and Aquarius is definitely giving us this... Um, insight and this frequency of being able to detach and let go and ride that electrical current you know so electricity travels through water very quickly so that's very like aquarius into pisces right so we can ride the current but the electricity is kind of fueling us being able to ride that wave in a very powerful potent fast way it is moving fast mars and capricorn is moving fast it's out of bounds so this is definitely strange unknown territory that can be a little rough but also magical 
And that's the beauty when Mars is out of his declination. So, yeah. Pay attention to the reflections today. There's a lot coming up, you know. And when, you know, there's if in relationships and communication today, when things get a little tense, because they can. I mean, when the moon's opposing Mercury with Mars as well, things can get a little tense. And Mars starting to... Um, Square Chiron, which we'll get into tomorrow more. Um, pay attention to both sides of, okay, like, one, here's the scenario. Like, in a conversation, if some kind of conflict comes up, like, one person's on the emotional end of the spectrum and one's on the more colder, harsher um, end of the spectrum, it's like, we, we don't want to battle it out and get caught um, in just one side. We want to be able to see. It's like, okay, like we have to be able to express our emotions, but we also have to detach to get to the goal. And that's what Capricorn is all about, is getting to the goal. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. It's going to be a great week. I got some new exciting things I've been planning to show you all who are here. So if you're new here, leave a comment. If you go to the description um, in this video, all the links to all my platforms are there. My Instagram. Um, these are also on Spotify if you like Spotify. My website where you can book a reading. Um, yeah. So, also, Natalie Sadie and I did a 2024 overview of all the astrology of 2024, it's about three hours long. If you go to her YouTube, you can watch the whole thing. So um, if you can't find it, send me a message. I'll share you the link. So it's pretty cool. And we're going to be doing more stuff. So, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.